Well, let's continue the uh, NDP MP rollout, if you will, as we just heard from Charlie Angus joining us me right now. Uh, very happy to welcome Matthew Green, the uh, NDP MP for Hamilton Centre, as well as the party's ethics critic, uh, Heather McPherson, MP for Edmonton Strathcona, and NDP foreign affairs critic. Thank you for joining me Thanks today. Thanks for having us. Listen, Matthew, I'm going to start with you because this is obviously your hometown in your riding. Why the convention here? Is that because... Is that a defensive move, or do you actually see this region in play in the next election? Look, there isn't a better city in the country that knows the impacts of, of the crisis of the cost of living, that understands the impacts of housing uh, shortages than, than Hamilton. And, and we have a long, rich history of organized labor, of the NDP. This is a perfect place for us to be. This is grassroots. This is people coming together, new Democrats from coast to coast to coast. We haven't seen each other in five years. It's an honor and privilege to welcome people to the city to make sure that we're grounded in the material conditions for people who are struggling out there. You know, nobody knows it better than those of us that are living right here in Hamilton. And I think we'll, we'll send us back to Ottawa and, and to our respective ridings across the country, uh, refreshed and, and refocused and ready to continue the fight against, uh, you know, right-wing populism and a failing Liberal government. Yeah, but do you see the Hamilton area oh, absolutely. rich for the NDP in terms oh, of the Oh, no, next we're, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, we are gonna, we're going to have some big inroads right here in, in Hamilton, and I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see it continue on in southwestern Ontario, working-class communities, people who understand there needs to be an alternative to all of the noise that's out there right now, that there needs to be a compelling alternative to the economic policies and the way in which we govern and distribute wealth and opportunities. And uh, we're really excited. We're going to have folks likely on the doors tonight going door to door, street to street, neighborhood to neighborhood, ready to take back uh, some hard fought seats. OK, so that's seat rich Ontario. And excuse the buzz as things are happening around us here. But, you know, Heather, I want to bring you in here because uh, at one point you were the sole NDP MP from Alberta. It doubled the last election. We now have the situation where, you know, the NDP got very close to gaining government last last May in Alberta, has won historically in Manitoba just last week. So where do you see the party having growth in the West? I mean, Edmonton is a, is a key place for us, in my opinion. I mean, I think we're seeing the doubling of seats in Alberta, and I, and I recognize that's from one to two, but, but I expect to double it again at least. You know, there's a lot of appetite in Alberta. We saw this with the provincial election, even across the prairies. You know, we, we saw what happened in Manitoba. Folks are looking for a party that is that is running with a hopeful message, that is talking about progressive values, that is that is standing up for things like health care, standing up for cost of living, making life more affordable for people, understanding the challenges that people face. Because, you know, we've we've got a liberal government that is completely out of touch. But the, the opposition, you know, Pierre Poliev isn't who he says he is. He's never worked a day in his life. He's he, he doesn't understand what folks are going through in the prairie. So I think there's some real opportunities um, in a number of different places across the across the country. But but I know we've got some delegates here that are that are putting their their hat into the ring. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to have them come as MPs next time. OK, you say that. And, and quite frankly, there is historic uh, recent history to, to point to that being a possibility yep. in Alberta and in many Western provinces. But of course, uh, in Ontario, it has been very much in the last couple elections, liberal versus conservative. And here you have the liberals, uh, you alluded to it, essentially eating the NDP support by going for the progressive voters. And now the conservatives trying to eat into the labor vote for the NDP by presenting themselves as a blue collar alternative. How do you make the NDP stand out in in ridings where historically, provincially, the NDP has not done well. Yeah, I mean, look, with Pierre Polyev showing up trying to pretend like he's for the working class, when workers are on strike, who shows up? Certainly not the Conservatives. It's new Democrats who are working shoulder to shoulder with Labour to fight for workers, to fight for better uh, pay and, and benefits. And let's call it what it is. The, the Liberals have been nowhere in action when it comes to fighting against, uh, whether it's Doug Ford here locally or you reference the other provincial uh, conservative counterparts. It's new Democrats across the country that are fighting against this kind of right-wing populism that seeks to undermine and burn down our institutions and create this division. Uh, we have an incredible opportunity in Ontario. People are fed up with the corruption of the conservative Doug Ford government. We have Pierre Polyev proposing housing policies that are right out of the Doug Ford playbook, which is handing over land to their wealthy insiders and their developer friends. Canadians are fed up. And I think what we're starting to see is that the old school progressive conservatives, the Bill Davis conservatives, the rational 
people who want fiscal responsibility, they understand that the Liberal government's not going to give that to us. They, they know that when it comes to their value for their tax dollars, because I think, look, people are willing to pay their fair share in taxes. They just want to make sure that it actually has an impact and it doesn't just end up in tax cuts for the ultra wealthy, which is what we see out of the Coke and Pepsi kind of Liberal Conservative flip-flop. So we're well positioned in Ontario. We are not being distracted by the faux culture war that Pierre Polyev is trying to use to target vulnerable populations. We are standing in solidarity because the truth is we're in a class war right now. The ultra wealthy, the 2% in this country are making off like bandits while everyday Canadians are struggling. And that's who we're fighting for. Okay, but in order to actually secure that vote, sure. does the NDP necessarily have to run more left of the Liberals? Because in many ways, listening to what was happening today in terms of policy debate, a lot of what was being proposed is arguably further on the, the spectrum left than, than most people are used to hearing from the federal NDP caucus. So. Will the party have to shift? And is that a danger for the party to shift that way? You know, in my perspective, the, the Liberals are nowhere to be found. You know, regardless of what their policies are, they're just, they're tired, they're done. Like, we're not seeing them stand up in the House. We're not seeing them take action. Uh, they're out of ideas. It, from, except, from my... except that they've introduced legislation. And, and fair enough, it came because of the Supply and Confidence Agreement <laughs> on national dental care, yeah. on pharmacare, but on... But these are our ideas, right? Except that it is the Liberals that have introduced introduced mm -hmm. it, and will they not get political credit for well, it? Let, let's be clear. They didn't introduce it. In fact, they voted against it. It's our confidence yeah. supply agreement that introduced it. This is not Justin Trudeau in 2015. This is Justin Trudeau in this day and age who is holding on. And if it not for uh, our ability to actually cooperate in a parliamentary system and deliver for working class people, we are forcing the Liberals to vote in favor of policies that they just voted against not two years ago. Like, that's what we're talking about here, right? And I think Canadians are smart. Uh, they're sophisticated. They know when they're being lied to. This is not sunny ways, Justin Trudeau. And they know that it's our caucus, you know, that's fighting tooth and nail, that is leading the way on negotiating on these files so that when Canadians get dental care, when we deliver pharmacare, when we have protection for workers for the first time in anti-scab legislation, it is not going to be because of Justin Trudeau. He is no friend of workers. It is only because the only working class party in Parliament is fighting for actual everyday Canadians. Okay, but you say that and I'm, 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 I'm thinking about, you know, whether or not the Liberals will still get credit for it. I, I hear what you're saying, but you know they, they are campaigning on we have delivered dental care, we have delivered pharmacare. That is coming from the Liberal camp. So how do you counter that and have them listen to you? I think we've got a lot of a lot of energy. I mean, you saw this in the room. We've got a caucus that's got tons of energy. The ideas that we're bringing forward that we're making the Liberals deliver on. I mean, we just have to tell that story. That's the story we need to make sure the Canadians hear that they understand is that the dental care isn't something that the Liberals delivered. Dental care is something that New Democrats made the Liberals do despite what they wanted. You know, pharmacare is something we know the, the Liberals will side with Big Pharma day in and day out. And so we need to make them do that. We need to make them stand up for, for working class Canadians. And for, for us, that's what we do. That's what makes us New Democrats. So, so it's telling our story. It's making sure people are hearing that. And I think across the prairies, across the country, increasingly, that is the story we're hearing. We saw that in Manitoba. You know, you can, you can run on, on a negative um, you know, racist campaign, or you can run a campaign based on hope mm -hmm. and ideas and, and, you know, looking at what could be achieved for Canadians. And that's the, that's the, the message that resonated with Manitobans and I think will resonate with Canadians as well. Okay, I want to pick up on pharmacare though, because as you know, there's a discussion right now amongst the delegates that they want the party, MPs like you, to go on pharmacare hard to make sure it remains a, a public program that covers a wider range uh, of, of, of issues and concerns. And they want your members to stake the supply and confidence agreement on making sure pharmacare remains public and strong. Is that the red line here? Is that what we're looking at, the, the potential of the agreement falling apart if the Liberals do not meet your standards on pharmacare? Yeah, you only have to look to the work of Don Davies, who's been incredible on this file. In fact, our entire negotiating team in the confidence supply agreement has been leading the way, right? So 
we know the files well, and it is clearly defined. So rest assured to the delegates and the Canadians that are watching at home, New Democrats are the party of health care. We are absolutely the party that is going to fight to deliver a, a single-payer public system because we know that when Justin Trudeau gets a hold of these things, the first thing they want to do is hand it over to big corporations. So we're going to be fighting tooth and nail. But I will say this, that in those negotiations, you will find that our team is at the table, you know, fighting every day, making sure they're meeting their deadlines. And I think if there's a party in this country who doesn't want to go to the polls, quite frankly, it's Justin Trudeau and the Liberal caucus. They are terrified because there's a visceral disdain for the lies and the broken promises. And we're using this system. We came back in a minority, in a Westminster parliamentary system with an opposition that is intent on burning thing, everything down, saying that the country is broken. New Democrats are cooperating. We're using our democratic levers to deliver for people. And, you know, coming out of COVID, you know, I talk to seniors, and at the end of the day, when it goes back to the people, there are people who are still losing out on their full dosages because they have to ration their medication because they simply can't afford it. Uh, or they have to make the choice about whether they're going to pay their heat and hydro or food. So no matter what Pierre Polyev says, I think you only have to look to conservative premiers across the country who would seek to continue the privatization and profiteering off of health care as one choice for Canadians, or new Democrats who are going to defend our public institutions and defend the affordability so that everyday people can access those systems. This isn't about the ultra wealthy being able to jump the line and go to private clinics. This is about everyday Canadians, you know, having the ability to access their pharmacare and to be able to make sure that our health care remains in public hands. Quickly losing time, but Heather, uh, since you are the NDP foreign affairs critic, mm -hmm. I do want to ask you, because tomorrow there will be the emergency debate on what is happening right now in the Middle East, Israel, Gaza, the Palestinian people. Obviously, organizers of this convention want delegates and members to leave United to help build support for the NDP. But does are you worried that the debate tomorrow has the potential to actually divide delegates? No, I think the debate tomorrow is so important. I mean, we have people mm -hmm. across the country who are who are really hurting around the world, that are hurting with what's happening in Israel and Palestine. And, and frankly, New Democrats are the only party that are talking about human rights, that are talking about international law, that are talking about you know, the need to condemn the, the horrific attack that Hamas did on the Israeli people and also protect civilians in Gaza. You know, we're the only ones that are talking about Palestinians. There was a, there was a report that just recently that, that there's been given two hours to evacuate a hospital in northern Gaza, that's not possible. You know, if we don't get a ceasefire, if we don't push to make sure that more civilians don't die, this is just going to get worse. So I think having this conversation here with, with folks that want to talk about human rights, that want to talk about international law and, and the role that Canada can play in the, in the world is, is the perfect place to have this conversation. And I'm, re I'm actually really looking forward to having that conversation and talking about that because my, my new Democrat brothers and sisters, we're the only ones that can talk about human rights and international law. The Liberals and the Conservatives aren't even talking about it. They won't even talk about it. Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that, and we will, of course, have full coverage for you at home right here from the Hamilton Convention Center as we continue to cover the NDP National Convention. But for now, Matthew Green, Heather McPherson, thank you very much for the thank time. You so much. Thank you so much.